So you're joining us backstage at Download 2012, where we are joined by Wolf Kenny from Drop from Murphy's. Thank you so much for taking the time out oh, to join my us. My pleasure, thanks for having me. Excellent. So how do you feel about playing Darlington this year? Oh, it's great. Our first time here, it's exciting. It's a lot of history, 10 year anniversary. Uh, we're on it to be here. It's going to be great. Have you, uh, do you have a chance to see any bands playing today? I have not seen a thing yet, unfortunately. <laughs> That's the way it goes too many times. But good thing is we play early enough to get down to we see Ozzy and, and friends so uh, yeah it'll probably be the only thing I get to pull off we have to go to a signing and stuff and uh, hopefully squeeze and rise against and, and Ozzy. What can we expect from your set today then is it going to be mostly stuff from the new album? Or? No no we always mix it up you know I think we have 50 minutes or an hour and uh, it'll be a little of something from almost all the records and maybe a little bit heavier on, uh, on the new album but uh, we haven't been to the UK a whole lot on the new record, so, um, but but by this time, you know, we actually have a brand new record that's that's done now, so it's like, if anything, in, in other places we've been playing new songs and stuff and starting to debut that, um, but here today, just because we haven't played a whole lot in, in the UK uh, and, and a shorter set, we'll, we'll keep it to as much as we can from uh, throughout the career of the band. So does that mean we're going to have to wait until the new album is released before we see you do a longer tour? Uh, we were talking about actually coming back maybe around Christmas. I'm not sure if it's going to happen. We have uh, one of the guys in the band has a baby due in the fall. So we were going to release the album in like October, but we've decided to wait till January just so we could, you know, have some family time with a newborn coming into the operation and another newborn. And, uh, and then we'll hit the road uh, hard, so I'm sure if we don't make it back by the end of 2012, we'll be back in early 2013. So, can you tell us anything about the new album yet, or is it underwrapped? That's the best album we've ever done. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, it's not like mixed or anything, like we have to go back and actually finish background vocals and, and mix it uh, when we get home. But I love the songs, it's, I, it's fun, it's kind of just like uh, really catchy but heavy, you know. Um, uh, the last album I really liked because it had like a, a whole storyline connecting every song and, and as great as that was it was like so much work mentally to kind of like it was almost like writing a book and an album at the same time and this was just like total opposite write fun songs and just like banging out I mean it's just quick, it's probably the quickest we've ever turned around an album you know after another one in our, in our career so that's that's actually pretty amazing how somehow that we did that on our eighth album. I'm not sure I didn't expect that. You know, the the, the span between the last album and the one before that was actually four years, so it's been it's been really oh, quick. You know. But like you said, the last album was kind of a concept album. After all the work that you put into it, have you ruled out the idea of another concept oh, album? Oh no, definitely potentially. You know what I mean? Um, but there was like kind of a uh, it was heavy at the same time. It was just it it, it, it consumed me. You know what I mean? Trying to like. Uh, I, I think I just needed a, a break from it, but um, I think I actually, you know, I, I think there's a lot more to be told within the story of that record. Um, you know, we just actually released a few months ago uh, kind of the bonus edition of the last album, which was live at Fenway, and we put a, a more elongated version of the story, and, um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I think I think the, the the reading into the more depth of it isn't for everybody. You know, and and I'm sure there's a lot of bands that I would, I love that if they did something like that, I might just be like I just want to hear the songs. But the fans who like really wanted to to go to a different level with it, like have been really grateful and appreciative and asked, when's it going to be a book and. You know, the author that kind of we got involved with, like, fleshing out the story to a longer degree, Michael Patrick McDonald's, one of my favorite authors, so it was, like, a real honor to work with him. So the whole the whole process was just, like, you'd have to be able to top it to do it again, and I think it would be hard to top, you know, so. so you just mentioned that last year you played at Fenway. That must have been such an amazing experience for you. It was definitely the highlight of the career so far. I mean, you know, the kind of the mecca of... Uh, you know, Fenway Park was 100 years old this year. I mean, how many things are around for 100 years these days, you know? And to get to play there, two shows there was... I don't know, I'm like the pessimist in the band and try to keep everyone grounded and say, that was good, it wasn't great, you know? Uh, but Fenway, like, gave me chills, you know? That was pretty awesome, yeah. Most of your stuff um, is obviously related to Boston and Boston culture and that. Are you ever worried that you might alienate your fans who aren't from Massachusetts at all? 
No, I mean, um, it's just stories about our life and stuff and growing up, and I think people, wherever they are, can translate that to their experiences or make them proud of where they're from. Uh, if we haven't alienated a New York audience yet, I don't think we'll alienate anybody <laughs> because some of the stuff I stay from stage down there, but they also know a lot of that is like just tongue in cheek and having fun and, um, you know, most of our fans know that we're about as grateful as you can be of any band to, to actually have an audience and we never, you know, I think it probably stems from the fact that we started the band as a joke, we didn't really have big, uh, you know, ambitions and it all just kind of happened so every time we get on stage it's just like, not like, oh, the people are here, we will perform for you. It's like, we are like, holy shit, I can't believe there's people here, you know? And it's just, every, it's, we have the best job in the world. And we have such a close rapport with the fans too that it just feels like it's all family, you know? So you're famed as well for your St. Patrick's Day performances. Another artist who, uh, re who manages to make a holiday their own is Alice Cooper, who's famed for doing Halloween things. Have you ever thought about doing some party day shows around elsewhere around the world apart from Boston? I think we would be strung up if we ever did that. <laughs> uh, I, I, I shudder to think, but one year, one time we said, let's take a year off and just do like one Boston show and do it. And I just said, it's just such a great time of year for us because it's like we, we play these multiple shows every year. And, you know, when you're at home and, and you can have everyone from your kids to your grandmother to every friend you grew up with all come into one place it's and then people traveling from all over the world to come there it's uh i don't think i'd ever want to mess with that you know so not not anytime soon will we stop doing st patrick's day in boston so where else can we see you before you go back home oh man we're back on mainland europe for the rest of the month we go to russia we're in Holland, uh, Germany, Spain, we've already been to Italy and Slovenia and a bunch of places, but we're over here till July 2nd, I believe, so uh, hop on a plane or a train and come see us. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.